when I first came to America, I felt very alone and very frightened because at that time I didn't speak any word in English. For example, I needed to, to know how to get to a place, but sometimes it, it was not enough to say with my signs uh, or with my hands. Many, many times I got lost in the streets. Many times I cried. When I came to America, basically 1970, so I was so afraid and fearful. How am I able to communicate or live? When I go to the supermarket, for example, and I want to ask for something, that sometimes I don't know how to order. So I stand behind a person and I listen <laughs> what they, how they ask. And I repeat the same. No, I try to do my best. Did you know that one out of every seven people in America is an immigrant? And when they come to the United States, they have a great need to learn English. And we can do that in our churches. Jesus sent the nations to us for a reason, because that way we can reach the nations by simply loving our neighbor. It's not, it's not sharp, it's I think the students that come to our ESL ministry are first off surprised by the fact that it's such a caring ministry and that we're really here for them and that we're offering something that they need and we're not really asking for anything in return. And there's a true depth of appreciation that they have for the fact that we would go out of our ways to help them with this. Abbreviation. Abbreviation. I walked into the classroom and fell in love with the students. They just being with them, watching their struggle, trying to help them, being their friends, it became so important that it became a passion for me. Next. February. Very good. February. I've been teaching for four years. I teach foundations, which is the basic level, and it's extremely rewarding because we're able to reach students that know very little to no English that after nine months are able to converse at some level. The English teachers at the church are very different. I can go to them for any questions, including the issues in my family, not just the English. Our English classes are usually called conversational English classes. We do not focus on grammar. I remember being in 10th grade in that horrible, horrible grammar class where you had to diagram the sentences, and this is not like that at all. This is a lot of fun. Good. You don't have to have a degree. You just have to love the students, because really that's what you're doing, is loving the students and giving them the opportunity to learn English. Yeah, so if you know English, <laughs> and you know how to move your hands around, and you know how to hold up objects, that's pretty much all you really need to do. You don't have to worry about translating. They will understand if you give them something concrete and repeat the words over and over in conversation, in games, in chants. Uh, and by the end of the two hours, they've said those vocabulary words 80 times. Actually, I have stayed here uh, three years and joined the different classes and uh, improved my English. Yes, that is wonderful. I'm not a teacher. I was an accountant. And after I took the training, I just couldn't see myself at a blackboard. But the class that I was in had round tables and I could be an assistant and you're up close and personal with the students, and that's what I liked. It's about the student and being willing to help them learn English and to just love them. When they asked me to teach, I was a little bit hesitant. I hadn't, teaching is not my background, but once I got into the classroom and it was before those students, and they were so eager to learn, and they made it so easy to teach that all that hesitancy just dissipated. I was nervous about the class size 
and speaking in front of a group of people who may not understand your language, having to speak more slowly, but there is a good amount of support. And once you start, you really get into the groove and um, then it becomes easier. The purpose of ESL ministry is to share the gospel in both word and deed. And certainly we are sharing the gospel in deed by teaching English, but we need to make sure that we're also sharing the Bible, sharing our personal testimonies, making sure that the students understand that Jesus is for all nations and not just for America. Each week in our ESL class, we present a verse from scripture. So we use these verses like we would any other lesson in ESL. We go over the vocabulary. We make sure the students know the meaning of the verse. We say it in English and repeat it several times. And then we have them say it in their mother tongue. It's amazing how one student represents a whole family. So let's say, you know, last year we had about 300 students that represents 300 families that are being impacted uh, with the gospel of Jesus Christ. And it's just amazing. And I just uh, can't imagine what God's gonna do with all this. Uh, you know, I, I call it, uh, you know, planting seeds, you know, seeds of the gospel. Once your church has this wonderful ESL school going, then you can have things like an international Sunday school class where you use the Bible as curriculum and the gospel flows even more freely. And you can have ESL Bible studies and moms groups and book clubs and outreaches to international college students and refugee ministry. There's no end to the different types of ESL ministry, but it all starts with meeting that felt need of teaching English. It's a beautiful thing. ESL is that great first step to reach into a community, meet a need, and the people that you meet are very blessed by the ministry. They bless you, and, and it just creates a great dynamic in your church, being able to reach out and be a witness for Christ, not only to the ends of the earth, but right in Jerusalem, right in your hometown, where you're meeting the ends of the earth and you're meeting the nations. I think ESL and having people that are uh, the nations coming to us is a beautiful picture and something that I've been encouraging our church to think about missions, not in the sense of, you know, we always think of missions as something that you got to travel miles and get on a plane and, and, and go witness to people. But we have the mission field right here. MA ESL has helped over 400 churches in the last decade to start ESL ministries. This is a proven method of how to get started. To get more information and to contact me, please go to the Mission to North America website to the ESL portion. You will find a startup kit with uh, about 30 chapters of all the organizational information you need, lots of devotional material, biblical information, and my contact number, and we will get a trainer to your church. My teacher is Ms. Diaz. Um, she's a woman who, ha who has a very nice heart to, to teach. In the beginning of the class, she always gave us um, a part of the Bible. Most of the time, it is from the book of John. I learned that I'm loved. I'm loved by Jesus and I love by God. The love of God is something new to me, new to me. And it's very, uh, very special. Now, for example, I don't feel um, alone anymore. And I, feel, and I feel loved by God. 